Okay, so uh, there you go. Um, my name's Jerome Turner. I did ask for a, a late session, so they gave me the last one, so that's fine. Um, I'm at the School of Media. Um, I'm actually a research assistant on the Creative Citizens Project, um, but I'm also a first year of my MPhil, so I started in February, hoping to uh, transfer next year to PhD. Um, these are the only words you will see in my presentation. You'll be glad to know it's all image-based. So. Um, Rachel Land quite helpfully introduced the idea of community media and one idea that's emerging from that is the idea of hyperlocal which is a relatively new term emerging in the last few years for a form of participatory media. So in, in the UK it's been described as online news or content services pertaining to a town, village, single postcode or other small geographically defined community. Um, the chances are you may have a blog, Facebook page, or Twitter account that does this near you. Uh, there's quite a lot of, lot of these in Birmingham. Um, there's, there's actually quite a deal of research already in participatory media practice, but less is known about the picture in the UK and less is known about the audiences as well. Um, and one expectation of this media is that it helps develop community and civic engagement. So my research is specifically asking how do UK online hyperlocal news audiences engage with their community through their use of this media. Um, this is my case study. Um, they're called wv11.co.uk and it's run by two citizens of Wensfield, which is a part of Wolverhampton, you might, may have come across. Um, they run a WordPress, WordPress blog that looks like this. So quite standard, um, and a Twitter account where certain activity is automatically posted from the <coughs> blog and then some other tweets are completely new in content. Um, but actually most of their engagement and participation with their community is through their Facebook page. Um, uh, excuse me. I'm through their Facebook page, yep. So their blog posts usually get sent here, but um, uh, they also put shorter stories uniquely to Facebook um, and often share those that people put on their wall. So it's worth noting that anyone can post a story on their Facebook wall, but it only becomes more visible if the editors then reshare it, basically. Um, part of the reason I selected WV11 um, is my personal position. So I live in the area, so uh, this top photo, me in the white shirt, is me riding, I'm not a cyclist, but it's me riding in a cycle speedway charity race. And at the bottom, this guy with the, the hat on is James Clark, so he's one half of WV11. And he got me into doing it. So that's an example of how they use the web to kind of civically engage their audiences. Um, I moved to Wensfield in 2011. I'm, I'm not considered a local lad. I was recently told that by a councillor that I went when I went to a meeting. Um, but I, I started using the website very soon after moving there, and I met the writers, and I've written a few stories for them. So. It's also worth noting that I'm currently the research assistant at the School of Media and in a related project, as I said, um, but, but that project isn't specifically looking at audiences, whereas I am. And my interest in audiences partly comes from uh, previous work I'd done in user-centred design when I was based in User Lab at Biad, if anybody remembers that, um, where users were, on a day-to-day -day basis, the object of study. Um, so Given my position and the fact that hyperlocal audiences are often studied in, in a quantitative way, I'm engaging in an ethnographic study. So part of this work is observing participation online, following people like Tom Bolstorff and his work in Second Life Ethnography. But my main method of observation is a private blog that I've set up where I post a few times a week, usually with screenshots or links, and I'm tagging up content according to th um, kind of themes that I'm coming across, behaviours. Um, with the idea that those tags make my posts easier to find after a, a year of ethnography. Um, so that's across Twitter, Facebook, um, all those kind of digital areas where, they, where I can observe their audience. Um, so these are my tags so far. So there's kind of themes starting to emerge, but as I say, it, it comes in the analysis later. Then following the work of anthropologists like Mark Postel and his studies of what he calls a neighbourhood's field of residential affairs, I'm also engaging in offline observation, attending community meetings and events, so policing meetings, that kind of thing. So, so one example of 
how that plays into the study is taking part in the cycle speedway race I built connections with another one of the cyclists there who was a local councillor and he's got issues with media plural plurality in the area where the local paper isn't actually reaching all the citizens in that area it has certain areas that where it's not actually delivered so there are a number of ethical dilemmas in this work as you'll appreciate one is the um, idea of informed consent um, so studying Facebook and Twitter, I can't declare myself every, every evening when I'm looking at this activity. And if I did, it would actually affect the field site and it would affect my, my study and the, and the audience. However, there is a, it's, it's a public forum, so, but it's not a public forum where anybody would expect their comments on a, a Facebook page to be lifted out and appear in a research paper. So I wrote a statement for the WV11 editors to post as a blog post. And that serves to bind the trust from the audience, but it's also a permanent referral point for anyone interested in con or concerned about the work. And similarly, if I attend um, community meetings, I organise it, organise it through the chairpersons and introduce myself at the start. Um, and then, obviously, when it comes to focus groups and interviews later on, where I'm di directly with participants, I can, of course, um, ask for consent more directly. So I can, I can briefly, I've only been doing the ethnography for around about two months, so I can briefly talk about what I'm seeing so far. Um, audience behaviours on WordPress, Facebook and Twitter vary, as shown here. So these are all um, to, related to the same story. Um, uh, they, start, they often start off as WordPress blog posts. They, they then get posted into Facebook with some additional contextual text. And then they're often automated to Twitter as well, but it's largely where Facebook, where the conversation and interaction happens through comments and shares and likes. Um, that's not to say the other pl platforms don't have value, but Twitter often develops conversations with peers, so with other hyperlocal media producers. Um, and Facebook seems to develop a much broader, wider conversation amongst the citizens. Um, something else I've seen is what I starting to call participation feedback loops. In this case, stories about lost animals or items and people trying to reunite them with owners. So the more people see these stories, the more they see it as a place for them for those kinds of stories, and so they post more and more of them. And when I've spoken to the editors at WV11 about this, they've said that they actually do try and break out of these loops. That's not to say that these these kind of stories aren't useful or interesting, because a, a, a story here about a lost dog um, got a reach of 8,900 people with 618 post link clicks and kind of that's quite significant when you compare it to the other stories around it which weren't those kinds of stories. Another thing I'm looking at is language. Um, so the person at the top here posts everything without fail in title case. Um, I've tried to identify the origin of this, whether it's a function of a software or mobile platform. Um, or whether it's an intentional typing style. So it kind of raises interesting questions of whether he types like this when he's texting and doing other kind of typing. And this is potentially something to observe and ask about an interview later. And, and actually looking at this and other mannerisms such as putting kisses in comments um, might demonstrate how people are comfortable in this place, in this online space, and how identity and community is developed through an otherwise standard platform and how people use this public forum in quite a private and intimate way. Um, last slide is uh, kind of looking to the future, really, I suppose. Um, what next? So I've got ongoing observation through to end of next year, running up to my um, PhD transfer. Um, ongoing offline field work, attending community meetings to engage and observe the audience and their concerns. And then also, obviously, preparing for focus groups of interviews as there's only so much that can be identified from observation without then needing to ask direct questions as to why people are behaving in certain ways that I'm observing. And that's everything. Thank you.